Hello everybody, this is Julian from Julian Tech TM. You've seen me build $400 PCs, $300 PCs. Let's try $250 lah, okay? $250. And here's the challenge for today. I'm gonna build it without leaving my house. We're gonna use technology. But before that, let's thank our sponsor for today, Xiaomi. Y'all know that I always love building PCs and I'm always looking for the latest and greatest but not for this video lah. But sometimes what I need has not been invented yet. So why don't I invent it myself? Introducing the Xiaomi Idea Lab, a mini game that allows you to build your very own futuristic device. And not just that, you get to win discount codes when you play this game. You can choose from four product categories and add up to two futuristic elements to the product. I came up with this device that basically turns me into a time-traveling cyborg. Snyder Cut ah, now cyborg, cool. I can operate this device with my mind and I can jump in time to any year I want. Telekinetic and time traveling technology may still take some time to come to me, but I can always dream with Xiaomi Idea Lab. Go try the game yourself and win discount codes by clicking in the link in the description below. Thank you, Xiaomi. So let's find the parts from Carousel. So the budget I'm going to set aside is 150 for a GPU. I think I can find a 1060 3GB. 50 to 100 dollars for the other the other stuff. Bunnerboard, case, hard drive, everything else, RAM. Can find one. Can find one. How do I get it delivered here? Is grab delivery. We're not gonna combine the cost. One is gonna be delivery cost, the other one is PC cost, okay? So let's find the PC first. Usually the problem with all these cheap PCs is that they don't have a good enough power supply to power the GPU. Ooh, this PC, a refurbished i3, 2 core, 4 thread, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 GB of hard drive might be possible, man. Well, you know what? I'm gonna wait and then we're gonna see whether any of them reply. Okay, I bought this PC, the refurbished HP workstation, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 500 GB of HDD, and a 550 Ti. Okay, got the grab running, so it will be here very soon. Next thing is to find a GPU. Guess what? Driver cancel. Damn you. Okay, searching for next driver. Progress! Found a driver. And I found a GPU too. 1060, 3 GB for 190. Sweet. Okay, very nice. We got this Ishun address that will bring my PC over. We have the bike that will bring my 1060, 3 GB from Bandamere. Pretty good! Pretty good! Hello. Hi. Thank you very much. Yeah. We got it. Have not left the house. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. We got it. I haven't even left the house. It's in freaking zip long back. Might want to re thermal paste the card because it is an old card. You see the screws are rusting behind, but we got it. All right, PC and graphic card is here. One problem is I don't know whether the PSU can take up the six pin PCIe power. The PC opens on the right side, which is weird, instead of the other side. So it's an upside down motherboard. Let's look at it. Yes! Yes, PCI power. Correct, Leo. Thank you so much. Great buy, $70 for this. First time, no problems. I mean, the pro one thing is it only has hard drive, which, you know, having an SSD will be great. Okay, I added a 1063 GB. Let's hope that it turns on. Will it light up? <sighs> Shit, not lighting up. Okay, let's see whether we can find out what's the problem. I managed to put the 1063 GB uh, on my test bench, which has uh, AMD 5950X working. I changed the cable. So weird, maybe it's... I don't know man, maybe you put in the HDMI, the whole thing cannot work. I know that cable is working, I but yeah, interesting. We're gonna try it one more time with that PC, but we changed the cable. And we see whether anything's different. This is the face of defeat. The PC refused to run the 1060 3GB graphic card. And I learned it's because the BIOS only runs legacy. It cannot run UEFI with secure boot disabled. <sighs> so I have two options. One is to buy a whole new PC and risk that not working or just go over budget and just get a good motherboard and CPU. And that will be super over budget. 
the next morning. Guys, we hit the f***ing jackpot. We have a PC. If I'm not wrong, an i3. It's a good gen, a good generation. And then we also have a motherboard with a CPU. Prop, like, she's, like the person was like, yeah, uh, I don't need, you can have it. What the hell? Motherboard and, and CPU. So if this motherboard don't work, at least I have this one. Sweet, 100 bucks. Stupid. Okay. CPU running, I got the 1060 3GB inside, cable management later will do, but the important thing, it's freaking running bruh! It's a 4th gen i3, it's not too bad, if I'm not wrong it's 2 cores, 4 threads, 4GB of RAM, not that good but you know, I think it's still playable, you can still play games with 4GB, although 4 is not... <sighs> 4 is tough. Both the CPU and RAM were running at 100% and they severely bottleneck the GTX 1060 GPU. And the CPU was running at 95 degrees. Oh, that's hot. But I realized it's because of the old thermal paste. So I reapplied the thermal paste and the CPU temperature dropped to 60 degrees. It's an improvement but still bottleneck the GPU to perform at 20 to 50%. Playing Cyberpunk was insane. Look at that. Not even joking, it ran so bad, it's good. Competitive games like CSGO, Valorant and Dota 2 were playable, but because of the RAM, they did drop frames here and there. It's playable, but you can't play competitive with this PC. However, I did spend more money, just for you guys. And bought the i7-4790K with 8GB of RAM for $200, man. I'm spending way too much money on this, but never mind. It's content for you guys. Even after replacing just the CPU, the results were awful. Cyberpunk was still running like a PowerPoint presentation. But after installing the 8GB RAM, most games were playable and enjoyable. Cyberpunk ran at 34 FPS on average, which is way better than the previous setup. Shadow of the Tomb Raider had a big improvement, not only at the average FPS but at the 99th percentile, which means you won't get random frame drops. And the competitive games were so much better. You can actually be competitive with this rig. To sum it all up, I do this so that you don't have to. I realized my mistake and it's because the PC I bought was a workstation PC, the one that's not this one. Lah, huh? And that PC was locked at legacy BIOS, which prevented me from using the GTX 1060. Also, I learned a hard lesson that 2 cores, 4 threads CPU with 4 gigs of RAM is just not good enough for games anymore. I have my hopes lah, I have my hopes lah. I recommend getting at least 4 physical cores with 4 threads, but if you really want to make use of your GPU, I recommend getting 4 cores, 8 thread CPU, like the i7-4792. And yes, the price. I'm embarrassed to share this because I completely went over budget. So if you just count the final product, it's $190 for the GPU, $100 for the PC with a PSU, HDD, mobile, i3 CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and case, and $200 for the i7-4790K and 8GB of RAM, which I realize it's actually quite expensive. Nowadays, PC parts old or new are expensive. Cause you Bitcoin mining! So the total cost of the PC is $490. But if we want to be really accurate, we got to add the $70 stupid fail PC and the 3 grab delivery fee which was about $70 resulting in a total damage of $630. Task failed successfully. I think it's just not a good time to build any type of PCs unless you really really need it. And with that, I think I'm done.